Oh, I'm doing it from here. I can.
to the celebration of life for Rebecca Lee Herper. Amen? Amen. We, we come here to remember and to her life here on earth, but most importantly celebrate her new heavenly home in our in heaven. Amen? Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you and thank you for coming this morning. The family, the Herbert family, also appreciates you coming and sharing as well with the family. Let's pray. Father, we come. And we ask, Lord, as we celebrate the life of Rebecca, that the Holy Spirit will be with us through this whole service. God, that you will be with the family during this time as they mourn and most importantly celebrate the life of Rebecca. We pray God in Jesus' name. Amen.
first I want to say it is such an honor to be able to be with you. And Uncle Mark, I can't explain enough how much of an honor and just to entrust me with something such as this, something so important. And on behalf of Uncle Mark, I want to thank everyone for the prayers, for the support, for their thoughts during this time that they've been going through. So beginning in 1983, Aunt Becky was introduced into the family through the marriage of Uncle Mark. You see, Aunt Becky didn't grow up in a Christian home, but Uncle Mark thought one day, hey, we need to get back into church. It's time. And so they went back to church, and that is when Aunt Becky gave her life to Christ. And from there on, she didn't miss a beat. Aunt Becky was a go-getter for faith. You see, from there on out, she made sure that every child was going to be cared for inside and outside of church. But not only every, ch every child that there is, but every person that she met. That they would be loved for, they would be cared for, and they would definitely be appreciated. You see, she had a passion for children's church. I remember growing up in the church and in the children's church with her and Uncle Mark, and they had such a passion to do it together. And now that passion has been passed on to her daughters, Eileen and Elizabeth, as they now have a passion to work with the children and make sure that they read that Jesus Christ is in their hearts. You see, this was easy for her with the children because she was so hard. If you know her, she'd always be picking on you. Definitely me. <laughs> I always felt like I was the one that was always targeted by her. And man, I loved every minute of it. I loved every minute of it. You see, she made sure that if it was even the first time or the hundredth time of meeting you, that you weren't a stranger to her. She would always take you in. She would always care for you. No matter who you are, I think everyone in here can attest that you were loved by that Herbert at one time or another. One of the many times that she loved uh, those around her and even her own family is one story that Uncle Mark was telling me was that well, every time that he was away from, for work, he'd be in Arkansas away, uh, Aunt Becky would check the weather all the time. And to the normal person, everybody's like, well, that's not such a big deal. But to Aunt Becky, it meant a lot. And to Uncle Mark, it meant a lot. So if it was bad, if there was bad weather wherever he was traveling to, she would gather the girls up and she would make sure to pray for them. Another instance is when Courtney was going through her, her struggles and her time of, of dealing with all the problems and sickness that she was dealing with. And Aunt Becky was caring for her and praying for her and also made sure to knit her some, some caps for her and her family so that they would all have it and be together in that. You see, she even during this time that she was struggling with cancer and for this past year or so, she was always putting others first. She was always praying for others first. Uncle Mark was telling me that she would just sit there and they'd be like, okay, let's pray together. I want to pray together. And they'd start praying and she'd start praying for all these other people. And Uncle Mark was like, why aren't you praying for yourself? And that's because she had a true heart like Jesus. She cared for others first. She loved others first. And then she loved herself as well. See, these aren't the only times that we remember her. To me, Aunt Becky was like a second mother. She meant so much to me. As I was a child growing up, um, my sister and I we would be taken care of by her in the morning because mom had work and dad had work. And so she would babysit us. And one specific time that, <laughs> that I remember is um, I didn't want to wake up early. I mean, I, I was young. I was like, I know better. I know how much I'm going to sleep in. But she believed in waking up early. She believed that you needed to get up when she was up. Um, <laughs> and so she got the girls up, and she she let me sleep after I was like, let me sleep, turned over, and I was like, let me sleep, please. So she let me sleep, and then finally I woke up, and of course, you know, being the young man I was at the time, I was like, I'm hungry. I want food. And I was like, Aunt Becky, what do you have for me? And as I say that, I look over at the corner of my eye and I see Eileen and my sister eating tater tots. And I'm like, man, tater tots sound 
so good. They sound so good right now. And I was just waiting, just hanging on every word, just waiting for Aunt Becky to say, you get tater tots too. And she said, you get a peanut butter and banana sandwich with syrup on it. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, a what? <laughs> a peanut butter and banana sandwich with syrup on it? What in the world are you going to give me that for? And she said, you didn't wake up on time. I'm like, I'm a kid, I can sleep. <laughs> and so after much begging and much, much just complaining, she finally gave in and she said, okay, you can have some tater tots too. So these are the times that I remember with Aunt Betty, but not just these times. I remember the times where she also, when my mom was having trouble getting me awake, she'd come over and flip the mattress over on top of me. <laughs> or the time that she put my hand in the warm water so I would wet the bed. Um, <laughs> or even the time that she took my underwear and put it out on the light post outside so for all to see. <laughs> you see, the thing is, she thought that would embarrass me, but I grew up around her. I was used to it by then. <laughs> but you see, these aren't the only times that we remember Becky Herford. We also know that she took care of, the, of us physically and spiritually. You see, whenever I cracked my head open at her house, she was there to take care of me. She was there to help me patch me up, even though it was a really big crack in my head. She probably said I lost a few marbles as well. But <laughs> she was there to care for me. She was there whenever I was in kids' church, and I was longing to find what I needed to fill that hole in my heart. She was there to help lead me to Jesus. She also was there whenever a girl broke my heart and she was ready to beat someone half to death. <laughs> <laughs> and most importantly, every interaction I had with Aunt Becky, I always left being loved and cared for more than I could ever know. She always made every interaction with that. Every time I loved, I just felt so cared for and loved. You see, it's times like these that remind me that Aunt Becky just gave and gave and always invested into those around her. Each and every one of us have a part of Aunt Becky inside of us. Each and every one of us are maybe a little bit honoring because she picked on us a little bit. But most importantly, she showed us how to love and take care of others. She showed us how to love the Lord and search after the Lord even through difficult times, and it makes no sense. And Becky will be greatly missed, but she will always have a special place in our hearts. And me, I will always be what she called me, her turn. <laughs> so we may miss her now, but she is with the Lord now. She is in a better place and she deals with no more sickness and no more pain. And we thank the Lord for that. And we thank Jesus for that. Thank you.
in John chapter 14. It says, Let your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. This morning we know where Rebecca is. I did not know Rebecca very well. I, I came to Kansas to be the pastor of Pitt Chapel about the time she had to take time off work and be at home while she went through this time. She struggled, she suffered, she was in a lot of pain. It took me a little time to go and visit her, and it had nothing to do with her, it had nothing to do with the family. But that word cancer scared the living day by out. My mom passed away a little over a year ago from cancer. And I knew that when I went to visit Becky, I would call her Becky, the family called her Becky, that's how I was introduced to her. And I knew that I'm going to have to face this. The human side of me, not the pastor side of me, the human side of me knew it was going to be very tough for me. But I, when, I went in, when I went there and walked in and they introduced me to Becky, she had the biggest grin on her face. She was so happy to meet me. She was so happy to meet her pastor. Mark told me that the hospice asked them if they would like a chaplain to come and minister to her. And she said, no, I have a pastor. And you know, that made me feel real good. But when I went to go visit her, her grin just made me feel so comfortable. Made me forget all about what was going on in my own personal life or my grieving experience of my mother, who had also died of cancer, passed away, is now in heaven. And I hope that they have already met. Amen. Amen. Another thing that Becky had done was she reached out for my hand like she knew what I was going through. It's like she grabbed hold of my hand and I was there to minister her, but she was ministering to me. Does that make sense to anybody here today? Talking with the family and knowing that she was a little bit ornery, I did not know that side of her. <laughs> if I did, I probably would have picked back and we would have had a good time, I'm pretty sure. But I was able to see the compassionate side of her, the loving side of her, the ministry side of her. I'd like to start off this service by first acknowledging that a loss is a disappearance of something cherished. Bereavement is the state of being deprived of something. Grief is a normal response to loss. And then, of course, mourning refers to the outward expression of grief. Now, all of these emotions are normal responses. When it comes to losing a loved one, however, where there is a void, and while we may be hurting on the inside, we can take comfort in the promise of our Savior. And when he said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. 
And now more than ever before is the time that we need to lean on Jesus. As a minister of the gospel, there are no magic words that I can say here today that will erase the pain of losing Becky to this dreaded disease. But I can offer you a word of hope. A word of hope through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because he alone can bring peace to you. Amen. Even in the midst of the great storm. We have gathered here today to celebrate the life of a person, in my opinion, who was a fighter. Becky fought this disease with all she had in her. Although this disease took her life here on earth, the victory was won when Jesus died on Calvary to give Rebecca a new life in him. No more pain, nor, nor, no more sorrow, and no more disease. We tend to look at cancer at this huge monster, and in some ways, that's very true. Cancer is a word that can strike fear in almost anyone. Many of us here today have lost someone to this terrible disease. But with a Holy Spirit perspective, we can realize that this monster, this difficult disease that mankind has been unable to conquer is really very limited in what it can do to us as a children of the Most High God. On Wednesday, May 26th, Becky lost her final battle to this disease. It stole years from her life down here, and it stole precious time away from her loved one. <coughs> and yet, while cancer stole from Becky's health, strength, and stamina, yeah. I want to remind you that cancer could not steal the fight to live because for her because for the believer. Cancer cannot cripple love. It cannot shatter hope. It cannot corrode faith. It cannot eat away peace. It cannot destroy confidence. It cannot kill friendship. It cannot shut out memories. It cannot silence courage. It cannot invade the soul. It can't reduce eternal life. It cannot quench the spirit. But most of all, it cannot lessen the power of the resurrection. Amen. As we sit here today, we need to realize and understand that there will come a day when tomorrow will start without us. And when it's our time to leave this earth down here, the question will not be, what type of degree did you earn? It won't be, what kind of car did you drive? Or how much money did you have in your bank account? For all of us, those things will be willed away for someone else to enjoy. The question that we need to answer correctly is this. Did I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior? <laughs> Because how we answer that question will determine, determine where you will spend eternal, eternity. Becky answered that question and fulfilled her life's purpose, a devoted wife, raising her girls and teaching children about Jesus. Everyone sitting here today has a choice to make. It is left totally up to you. It's called free will. But the reality is this. He is either your Lord and Savior in life, or he will be your judge in death. 2 Timothy 4, 6-8 through says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And do 
not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Appearing. Becky believed in Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. I see children in this room here this morning, and I am sure that she would probably sit and wonder, <laughs> are, do they know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior? I'm sure she would probably be inviting the family to come to church and uh, inviting the children to come to children's church so she can share the love of Jesus Christ with them. Children were her passion. And she loved children. This morning I'm asking you to think as a child. To have the faith as a child. Think back when you were a little child, when you were running around your yard, playing with your friends and your family, and, and playing games out in the field and all kinds of different things, or maybe even coming to church. Maybe you came to this church and Becky was your children's pastor. Maybe she led you to the Lord. This morning, you came to a celebration of life for Becky. The family told me she didn't want to just to have a funeral service. She wanted to have a celebration of life and sharing Jesus Christ with the people that come. She wanted you to know that there is a Savior. She wanted you to know that there is a man named Jesus that knows all about you, that cares about you, that loves you. She wants you to have a relationship with Jesus because she had a relationship with Jesus. And she knew the truth.
John chapter 14. I want to read from verse 6 and 7. And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have sent him. Jesus said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. From talking with Mark, it didn't take very long for Rebecca to receive Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. It didn't take her very long to get involved in ministry and reaching out to the children. It didn't take her very long to be faithful to Jesus. And I believe today she is in heaven celebrating with the loved ones that gone on before her. Mark, I remember you telling me a little bit about her life growing up. Not too much detail, but that she had a hard life growing up. And I am sure that when she met you and you introduced her to your family, the Perker family is a beautiful family. I am sure that it wasn't just the fact that you loved her, but the fact that your family showed the love of Jesus Christ to her. And then she probably thought to herself, I have waited my whole life to know a family that loves. I waited my whole life to be loved by a man named Jesus. And today you have that choice. You have that free will to accept Jesus Christ as your person. <clears throat> no tomorrow is promised. Not for any of us. I joke around sometimes and say that none of us are getting out of this world alive. And there's truth to that. But there is a place called heaven. There is a man named Jesus that died on the cross. John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. As a child, that is the first scripture I learned. Some of you came here today and you went to church and children's church and you grew up in church and maybe you have drifted away. Maybe you have never been in church and this is the first time you heard of a man named Jesus. Or maybe this is your first invitation to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. It doesn't matter to me what the purpose or the reason you feel your life is today. What matters to me is have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? While visiting with uh, Becky, I had brought over a handkerchief that belonged to my grandfather who had pastored for many years in the Church of God and uh, planted many churches throughout those years since the early 50s. And I have a whole bunch of those handkerchiefs. And I felt one day when I was visiting Becky, after I had anointed this handkerchief, just a white handkerchief, it was a little stained from use of my grandpa, and I felt the Lord telling me to give it to her. Something that meant so much to me, I gave it to her. And I'm sure that it meant a lot to her, but I want you to understand today, 
Jesus Christ, the relationship that I have with Jesus Christ did not start out as easy as some. As a child, I learned Jesus. I learned John 3, 16. I grew up in, as a teenager, I, I had a really broken home growing up. But when my grandpa asked me, you come to the church? I'm like, no, Gramps. I don't want any of that religion. And maybe you're here today thinking that same thing. But when my grandpa said to me, with tears in his eyes. And I'm sure Becky would feel the same way. He said, Joe, it's not about religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I didn't change right away. It was a gradual change for me. But let me tell you, it was a change that changed my life forever. I was heading down the wrong path. I had made some bad mistakes. But when I accepted Jesus Christ, my life began to get better. I still have struggles. I still have trials. But I want you to understand today, there is a man named Jesus who loves you, who cares for you. Who wants you to call him friend? Who wants to be your savior? And I'm going to ask the team here today to sing at the cross one more time as we all stand and sing with them. This one. Let's sing. I believe. 
believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you rose again on the third day. And I believe today that you're in heaven on the right hand side of our heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father in heaven, inasmuch as you in a sovereign love have called the soul of our loved one and friend, Becky, to be with you, we express our thanks for the privilege of knowing her. We thank you for the way that she impacted the lives of many children and those that are here this morning. And for your grace through difficult times, we are grateful for your love. You who sent us in this great shepherd of the sheep. You who have prepared a place for all who trust you and who alone are worthy of our faith. To you we turn for continued strength, continued comfort, continued perspective, continued purpose. Be with the family this week and these days as they turn the page in their life. There's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. There's going to be time of grieving and time of remembering, time of laughter, time of love. And most importantly today, Father, there's going to be time of need. Let us draw closer to you. Let us not go a day without knowing that you're with us. Guide and direct our steps. Oh Lord, you, you love us so much. You care for us so much. I want to thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for me. I want to thank you, Lord, for those who gave their life to you today. And I want to thank you, Lord, for the life of Rebecca Lee Parker. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, as you were dismissed, the uh, if you if you see the family out in the foyer or up here, if you want to greet them and um, to take your time and and, and 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 just celebrate, you know, with them. Be blessed. Love one another. And God bless you.